Maranatha, my PBC family and friends. Pastor Brian here with another quick bite, living the word. So the word I have for today is a thought that actually, well, not necessarily a thought so much. You know, there's a passage here in Luke chapter, um, uh, excuse me, uh, in Luke chapter 23. But what got me thinking about this is uh, I just know that so many people kind of have a hard time or, or lose faith sometimes when they think about a loved one they've lost who may not have known Jesus Christ, their personal Lord and Savior, who may not right now in their mind be in heaven. But I want to give you guys some hope this morning. I, you guys have heard me say before, and I will always uh, hold to this, for th th this idea. I am never going to say who's in heaven and who's in hell because that is not mine to judge. That's the Lord's. And even though someone may have lived their entire life uh, not living for the Lord, their entire life denying him or being wrapped up into a false religion or whatever the case may be, here's the thing I do know about our Lord and Savior. He loves them. He loves them so much that he died for them. And what, it, what this got think, me thinking about this morning was in particular, you'll remember, as the Lord Jesus Christ is being crucified, he is nailed between two malefactors, two criminals, two uh, murderers and thieves, actually. But um, he's, nailed, he's nailed between two of them. And uh, both of them, they began to mock him. But then one of them had to change of heart. Somewhere in the midst of all of it, one of those malefactors, one of those thieves, one of those murderers has a change of heart. And he says to him, Right. Uh, as the one begins to mock him, it says in verse 40 of uh, Luke chapter 23, but the other one an answering rebuked him. Right. So the one was mocking him. The other one answered, rebuked him, saying, doesn't dost thou not fear God, seeing that thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. So now he says, OK, here's the point. He says, Lord, I recognize now who you are. I, I know it took me till this very end of my life, literally the end of my life. I am on this cross, nailed on this cross with you. I am dying. And it took me till this point to recognize your love for me. And then he says this. Look at the Lord's response to him. He says, and he said, unto him, Jesus, remember, Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Now, what is amazing about this thought is if we stop and think about this, yes, this is recorded in scriptures for us. We know what happened here. But what's amazing to me is how many of his family members do you think believed he had gone to hell? How many friends or people that he had harmed do you believe think he's in hell? Because he lived his whole life in opposition to God, in, in disobedience to God. So they presume that he is now what? In hell. But now we know he is not. He's in paradise with the Lord God Almighty, with Jesus Christ himself. Now, what's awesome about this, guys, is this. is It doesn't matter what everyone else thinks. It only matters what Jesus Christ thinks. And so I want you to hold out hope for any. I, I want to believe that there's none in hell. Now, I know that's a ridiculous notion. We know there are going to be some that obviously are in hell. All right, Judas Iscariot being one of them. I've lost none save the son of perdition, right? But, but we know, we, we can have this hope, we can have this thought, for lack of better terms, that, that there's none in hell. And it's, a, and it's an appropriate thought because we know that Jesus Christ, even the very last moments of this man's life, was willing to accept him if he would just turn to him. So we don't know what's happening in the stillness of the minds or the hearts of men or women and, uh, when they pass away. We don't know what God is doing to minister to them and how God may be there to speak to them and how they may be crying out to him. But we know that if they do, what the response would be, today you'll be at me in paradise. That would be the response because that was the response for the thief on the cross. So we can have that hope. We can have that comfort, guys. We can have that desire. Now, sometimes we get upset thinking about those who might not be there. What I'm going to say right now, stop thinking about them not being there. Pray for them. Pray, well, they're already passed away. That doesn't matter. Remember, our Father's outside of time. Pray for them. Lord, have, may you have ministered to them in their last moments. May they now be in your presence, Lord. Pray for them. And trust that Jesus Christ loves them even more than you do. So he wants to see none perish as well. So I hope this encourages you today and just challenge you on how you might go about dealing with those losses that we all deal with. I love you. We love you. God loves you. And God's got this.